Welcome to Polymer Clay TV. I'm Elisa and today I'm going to show you how to make this design. And it's really cool because it's a, it's a combination of different things that broken down make it really easy to do but can look really cool and also you can elaborate on these things which I like too which I'll show you um, a little bit later. So anyways what I'm going to be using is the Geo stencil which is uh, just a mylar stencil and of course you can use any one but this is the pattern I chose here I'm going to be using a template if you've got if you're part of polymer clay adventure and you got the class starter box this was in there um, if not we should have it available on the site as well and we are going to be using primo cherry pie and black um, the cherry pie is souffle, but really you can use any color. This is just what I used. And then I'm going to use this uh, black pigment powder. I'm going to show you the difference with the golden and uh, in this gorgeous gold. <laughs> it's a golden brand and the gold color. <laughs> Anyways, uh, of course you have your tools. You're going to need an X-Acto knife. Um, I have this is the cutter from the Arabesque set. And I had it sitting on my desk and I wanted to put these little, I wanted some kind of decoration on the top. So you'll see, I'll use it just with the corner right here. Um, just a way to add some extra decoration. And so I got a paintbrush, a little dauber, you know, the normal stuff, a uh, roller and a blade and, uh, and that's it. So let's go. Oh, and I have screw eyes too. These um, are really good to help you hang it and I'll show you how to put it all together. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and put the stencil on our design here uh, on our piece of clay and because you know it's going to be two thicknesses as you can see here there's the black on the back and the red on the front I went pretty thin on my pasta machine I went uh, a, thir a number three um, setting so the third thickest setting on my pasta machine you can certainly go even thinner it's up to you um, you know, it depends on how much weight, if you're making it into earrings, you may want to go a little thinner. If it's a pendant, it may not matter to you. So, what I did with these was I took my brush and I used the black powdered pigments and basically just dabbed around and like any stencil you would ever use. And it, this is what you're looking at here. However, I thought for the one I show you, I want to show it to you in this golden color here. And it's called Iridescent Gold Deep Fine. And it comes in these little bottles. And a little goes a long way. And I really like it because it's really, it really, really bright. And when I put it on this black clay, you'll see that it looks like snakeskin. So I wanted to show you that. So that's why I'm doing it in a different color than the earrings. But you certainly can do it the exact color. It's just the red, the cherry pie color and the black pigments. So let me just show you this. I put a little bit, like I said, a little goes a long way in, with this. And I have this little dauber that I just found and I'm loving. And you just go across your stencil by dabbing it in. And the reason why I wanna go, I don't wanna drag it so much is because I want this to be really bright. And it seems like it kinda dulls it down when you drag. So you wanna kinda daub, you know? You don't want to drag. And so you just use as much as you need. Come on out. Oop. I'll cover this whole section here real fast. And as you see, it's not time consuming. Um, sometimes if I see that it, the area is a little light, I'll go back over it and add a little, another layer of the gold. Because I want this to be very bright, vibrant, and you'll see when I pull it off just how gorgeous it is. And it makes a difference if you dull it down or if you leave it nice and vibrant. Okay, so that's that. Let me peel it back for you so you can see. 
dun, 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 dun. Look at this. How cool is that? Tell me that doesn't look like a snake skin to you. And it's really, I mean, that's not the design, but that's exactly what it looks like. And it's, and I love the look of it. So you can change up the look just by using different, you know, mediums. You can use Pam pastels. You can use the, um, the powder pigments. You can use paint. This is acrylic paint, by the way. And so, you know, think about that as you start making your items, you know, what, what you would, what look you're going for and then use that appropriate medium for that. So this is dried and now we're ready to cut out using our template and with this one I used a bigger one I think I'm gonna go a little smaller um, this time and I think this is a good size here and you know if, obviously if you're planning earrings you want to make sure you have enough done for two but I'm just gonna lay this down since not, we don't really have anything planned at the moment so you want to get a sharp blade. I have one that, that broke. It's not ideal. However, that's what I've got and that's what I use. So basically you want to use the side of the template as your guide and you want to hold it still as you go. And you know, don't, don't try to rush it. And you know, just go slowly and feel your way across. I should be doing this on a tile, but I'm not. <laughs> and uh, if you cut it all the way through, it'll pull away, obviously. And there you have it. So I have a few little edges that I didn't cut perfectly. And, you know, you can just come back in and clean those up easy enough. Until you, you have it the way you like it. And use your finger. If you want to clean anything up. And... There you have it. So the next step, let me move that aside. I actually took some clay. We could use red, but I think I'm gonna put the red on the, on the back there. And rolled a little snake to go along the top line here. This is the one we did before. And so you just take, take whatever leftover clay you have I like to roll it in a ball and then a snake like so and you can decide what you know what thickness you like and because uh, you know you just want to make sure it's long enough to go across the top and then you'll cut off the sides so you want it to be pretty much all the way consistent all the way across you don't want one really thick you know you can use an extruder for this if it makes your life easier, but you know, it's really not a big piece that we're using. So if you don't want to go through all that, by all means do it by hand. And so I'm just sticking it on the top and pressing it lightly so it adheres. And then I'm going to use my blade to cut off the excess. And try to line it up with your piece. Simple as, as that. And so, like I said, I'm going to press a little more. I want these two pieces to adhere. And I also want to shape it the way I want to shape it. So, at this point, I decided to use the point of this little uh, cutter, which, like I said, is from the arabesque set. And I just use it basically as a stamp. It's a little hard for me to see at this angle, but you get the gist as I go across here. <laughs> it makes a really nice texture because it's a point. So you think about your cookie cutters that you have and how to use different pieces of it too because yes, obviously I can cut out this shape but I can also do other things. It's It's got dual purpose. And I like to find out when I have things that are dual purpose. So I will be coming back with gold paint, that same golden paint, but I'm not gonna do it now because I, I don't wanna get it all over everything. You wanna wait for that. And so then I'm gonna stick my other piece down, which is my backing. And I wanna give it a gentle push. You don't want it to adhere because we still have to stick our screw eye in there so we can hang it. So right now we're just cutting it out so it has a back piece that looks really nice. And you can you could try to put your template back on, but it's just, it's just as easy to follow along with your X-Acto blade. And I just, I like to cut off the bigger pieces as I go. You know, I don't like to leave it on there, it gets in my way. 
when I'm using a blade. And you know, just move your, I'm working on um, deli paper so that I can move the paper around and not have to pick up the piece a thousand times. Really as simple to make this, it's just a few steps and uh, you know, you can have something that's pretty cool. Let's see. And I got it just about there. I'm gonna take off another little piece. And obviously you wanna smooth any edges that you have here with your fingers or a, a rubber tool, but you also wanna make sure that you can pull it apart because that's where you're gonna put your screw eye. And then once we put the screw eye in, we can we don't have to worry about pulling it apart again, obviously. So we can then get it to form together. So I'm going flat with my screw eye because then if I put it on like a, if I was going to make an earring, it would. I don't think I would have to use another jump ring. I, that direction is a good direction. So I'm just making it flat. And if you do have to use a jump ring, you know, obviously you can. So I'm just pressing them together. As, you know, just being gentle, you don't want to distort your design. And when you think you have it all done, you know, you, then you're ready to paint it. So I'm, I got a little extra here that I'm not liking. So I'm going to cut that. And I think I got it on the, same, on the other side as well. So just cut off any extras that you're not happy with or whatever. To get yourself a nice smooth edge. And there we have it. So let me come back here. Again, with the golden paint. And this I did with with a brush. Um, where's my brush? Here we go. And the reason why I did it with a brush is because I wanted to get it down in the cracks. I should probably peel off this dried up, rotten paint. <laughs> so anyways, I come back with my brush. Get it down in the grooves there. And it picks up the nice details that you added 